but overall, it worked. Yeah. <clears throat> and he was in a great mood, laughing a lot during the Crypto Cup in um, Miami. This is the tour finals with four players. Magnus Cross is one of them, sitting in an arena in San Francisco. He will start out with the white pieces against his big rival from 2021, Wesley So. What is Magnus Crossen's plan in this first game? We are waiting for first move. We have seen him experiment quite a lot this season with his openings, Magnus Carlsen. So what do you expect from this game, David? Yeah, as Ivanka mentioned, white. Starting with the white pieces, that is going to be key. And uh, Magnus, he has freestyle throughout the year. It's often as if he's rolling a dice or something in, in terms of his opening choices. But yeah, I expect him to play his best openings, the openings he's been relying on in World Championship matches. Uh, for example, the Catalan or maybe some Spanish openings. Um, because you can't freestyle against Wesley. Wesley is too strong, he's yeah. too good, and he will punish you. And uh, here we go. He does open with 1e4. And I'm expecting Wesley to copy. There we go. Will we be heading towards the Berlin defence? That's Wesley's go-to solid um, black opening. We do see the Spanish and Will Black's other knight come out. It is the Berlin defence. Rock solid stuff so far. An exchange of pawns in the centre. I actually had this position this weekend myself as really? Black against Jon Ludwig Hammer, another commentator. It was a draw. With Black, this is known as rock solid. But can Magnus break down this defence? White's rook is kicked back. Both sides have castled. Wesley now offering a trade of rooks. Are you surprised, Ivanka? This is known to be very level if Black knows what he's doing. Yeah, I'm slightly surprised because I actually expected uh, Magnus to take the game into more unconventional waters. And instead, we see here quite a symmetrical position. I mean, in the sense that all the pawns are on the same side and it's just going to be all about which pieces are better. And the players are just racing through the moves. And... I get the feeling that this isn't the most ambitious approach from Magnus. Oh. Yeah, it's very, very surprising stuff, to me at least. I mean, this has a reputation, this exact variation of the Berlin has a reputation of being just not necessarily unambitious for white, but uh, it's minimalistic. Uh, you're just aiming for a safe position. No risk, but not much reward, uh, potentially. And uh, I also have experience of this exact position against AlphaZero, a well-known computer program. I was part of a team that played against the, uh, the uh, AI uh, AlphaZero, and we made a draw with White. Uh, it's just uh, impossible to lose this position, essentially, if you're Magnus. Look at the pawn structure now, completely symmetrical. And unless he has a brand new idea up his sleeve, maybe involving these pawn pushers, oh. then... Uh, Oh, I say a brand new idea. It doesn't look too impressive. <laughs> but uh, yeah, unless Magnus has something here, I have a feeling we're going to head towards an equal position. And um, I was just going to say, get this. You know, Wesley himself has played this exact position with the white pieces to secure a draw against Veselin Topalov. Oh. Yeah. Magnus as well. He's played this variation when he only wanted a draw against Sergei Karyakin in the last match of the 2016 World Championship. <sighs> I'm so surprised, I've got to say. And, yeah. Uh, I mean, unless Black does something crazy, how are you ever going to target any weaknesses? Black's position has no targets at all uh, to probe at. White has slightly better pieces. If you look at White's queen, it's on an open file. If you look at White's bishops, they're slightly, slightly superior to their counterparts on better diagonals. But it's hard to get excited about this position, Ivanka. It, it is very difficult. I mean, what does uh, Magnus Carlsen have up his sleeve? He's again checking the database. I can see that um, Wesley has played it with the white pieces and also the black pieces. This exact same position happened in his game with Maxime vachier Legrave, And that was, surprise, surprise, a draw. And they're still following that game. Huh. So I can tell you, uh, Wesley actually moved the knight to the square in front of the king and uh, relocated the pieces just to initiate some trades. Yeah. Uh, two words here, comfort zone. And both players are well <laughs> in their comfort zone. Um, yeah, no surprises so far in terms of moves. Nothing flashy, nothing, uh, nothing to write home about. But yeah, I think Wesley, after a little bit of thought, look, he's looking down right now. He's just going into recall mode. Uh, he's going to relocate the Black Knight. He doesn't choose the square you mentioned, Ivanka. Um, moving the Knight back to the center rather than the square uh, to protect its king. But, uh, yeah, still looks solid. Yeah. The Black Knight now has its eyes on both sides of the board. This is an ideal square. Some pressure on that Black Knight from the White Bishop, but again, it's defended. Oh. <laughs> it's hard for Magnus to create anything. Still, you don't have any pawn breaks. That's the problem with this position. No way to open lines, no way to generate an attack. So if oh. one of them 
comes up with something new in this mm -hmm. one. Would that be like huge news in the chess world because the <laughs> Berlin is just so well tested? Yes, and especially this variation of the Berlin. There are ways to make the Berlin defense kind of interesting. Mm -hmm. There are ways to keep the tension, change up the pawn structure, uh, create imbalances, but not this line. <laughs> Shift the reality, right? So the whole perception of this line, if Magnus manages to kind of concoct some very powerful novelty. I mean, just look at the position, it looks totally net level. Mm. But one thing I would have to say about these two is they do sometimes play it very quietly. I mean, Wesley is known to be pragmatic and he's happy with a draw, safety first in uh, certain situations, and they leave the fireworks to the later stages yeah, of true. the match. So I was thinking of... Uh, there's so many times that we've seen this particular position from these two, or not this particular type of position, but these type of very symmetrical mm -hmm. uh, games. And yeah, so this game is probably not going into history as one of the highlights from the 2022 season. But we want to know today, Ivanka, what the viewers look back on when thinking of the 2022 season. Of the yeah, course. definitely. <laughs> we are asking everyone at home, what is your favorite moment from the Meltwater Champions Chess Tour 2022? I mean, there's so many fun moments. And as always, you can tweet your answer using the hashtag ChessChamps and we will feature your moments memories and your recollections and your clips, pictures or anything you want to send us on the show. Look forward to hearing them. I mean, yeah. uh, this is tournament number nine. There's been so much action on the board. There's been so much fun in the studio. There's been drama, chess drama. There's been interesting interviews. So much has happened over the past year. And for Magnus, what a year it's been giving up his world championship title, the drama with the cheating allegations. I mean, it's been a life-changing year for Magnus. Yeah, it's been a, I mean, it feels like there's been drama every single month, every single I tournament. Know. There's always been a chess story um, featuring half these players actually. And um, yeah, for Magnus, it's about getting back into the chess, refocusing. He's still clearly, he's very ambitious and he will want to win this tournament. And um, yeah, I mean, that's why I love the format of this tournament, just because we will find a winner every day of each matchup. It's as if it's knockout chess mm -hmm. uh, every single day. But yeah, for him, it's been an up and down year and uh, he'll want to end it on the high. And uh, meanwhile, Wesley has been thinking for a while and that gives us more time to focus on our favorite moments because uh, <laughs> yeah. I definitely don't think this game is my favorite uh, of the season so far. <laughs> we can mention the other uh, matchups going on. Jan Christoph Dudan, number two, Heading into this tournament in the overall Meltwater Champions Chess Tour 2022, he is sitting here in Poland in his home, fighting basically against Pragnananda for that second place in the tour overall. And today he is playing against Arjun Aragaisi, who's been on fire over the last couple of tournaments. He is playing from India in the middle of the night, basically. 1.30 a.m. in the morning, starting the, tur the tournament every day. And then Pragnananda. He is also playing from San Francisco, flew all the way from India to sit in the arena today, playing against Mohamed Yarov. And I bet there's gonna be fireworks in this one. Absolutely. I mean, Prague was famous in the Oslo Esports for winning his matches in three games. Oh, that's true. And uh, one person who he did beat in those three games is uh, Shakriya Mamajarov. And of course, Mamajarov is such an exciting, yeah. confrontational player that when they, when they do meet, I mean, there's just going to be fireworks and excitement. Um, and from what we saw of Mamajarov in the previous tournament, he's just getting better and better. Do you think he's... Is, is he one of the players... Do you think maybe that can compete to win the whole tournament? Possibly for Shaq, consistency is the key. Uh -huh. I mean, he's synonymous with entertaining chess, with spectacular moves. But uh, sometimes if if you're inclined towards sacrificing, that can backfire. And mm -hmm. maybe that's been his Achilles heel in throughout his career in terms of kind of reaching the pinnacle of world chess. But yeah, I mean, his, his games are just a joy to watch. And I have a feeling the viewers, we've asked them the highlight of the season. I have a feeling that some of them will mention uh, Mama Gerard's games. Yeah. They've been amazing, another level. Mm -hmm. And another player who's done fantastic this season is Liam Le, playing from his office in St. Louis, also sitting in the US. He is playing against Anish Giri, the fourth player in the San Francisco arena. It's been a tough year for Anish in the Meltwater Champions chess where we haven't seen him in a single final what an end it would be for him to this season's tour to finish off with a victory in the tour finals what chances do you give anish yuanka 
he hasn't done so well this season, as you yeah. mentioned. I mean, I'm thinking back to Miami and I'm thinking he didn't, he placed seventh there and things just seemed to go wrong. He didn't do very well in the Oslo eSports in his match format. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I, I know that he will definitely be motivated. He will be looking to improve on his game. I mean, but will he be the winner? Mm. That I really fun. like you, Anish, yeah. <laughs> but I'm not so sure. An underdog. Yeah, maybe it will suit him to be an underdog. Yeah. Um, Anish, often the moments where he doesn't make those breakthroughs, uh, when he, it's when he feels the pressure. And now there's no pressure on him. Nobody actually expects him to win. He's up against the Giants, uh, probably the two best rapid players in the world, or two of the best, uh, Magnus, Wesley. Yeah, it feels like Anish has nothing to lose, and that's often when the top players, they perform their best. Um, I have a sneaky feeling he'll cause a shock or two, Anish Giri. Um, the one problem for him maybe is the playoffs. Um, the blitz format sure. doesn't suit his style necessarily. He's not as quick as some of the others. So um, I, I genuinely think he has a chance, but yeah, he has to hope that a lot of things fall in his favor. Mm. I agree. I mean, playoffs is definitely his weakest. I mean, he put out a tweet after he lost a critical playoff against uh, Nihal Sarin, where he was winning quite a few games. He, he quoted Taylor Swift. He said, uh, the problem is me. Aha, uh -huh. mm. yeah. Struggle this season, Anish Giri, but uh, maybe he can cause uh, some trouble for the other players here in the Tour Finals. We are following game one. Magnus Carlsen taking a sip of maybe some energy drink. It's not a very energetic position. And game one against Wesley So, the Berlin. And it, even as a non-chess player, I know the Berlin means... <laughs> no. Say it, Kaya, say yeah. it. <laughs> Yawn. Oh, well. well, there's one open line on the board. <laughs> yeah, that's and uh, yeah. Magnus is queen and the rook. They're <laughs> taking full control. Whether he can do anything with this, well, very minor advantage, well, that's up for debate. Yeah, you control this file. Uh, your pieces are very good. Actually, your bishop is on a great diagonal here. Your light square bishop points on the right side of the board, but... Yeah, unfortunately, everything is defended for black. And here, I, I do think it's the first small critical moment of the game. Mm. Wesley has to be slightly careful because black's rook is asleep. Uh, black's queen is a bit stuck. She doesn't really have too many squares to go to. She has to stay defending her knight in the center. And uh, the one way that Alpha Zero, I mentioned earlier, I had this battle against it. Uh, the way it solved its problems for black was to eliminate this white knight. Slightly different scenario, but if you eliminate white's knight, then uh, your position pretty much is uh, safe. For example, after a trade here, White's queen has kicked off the open file. White has to take this way uh, to preserve his pawn structure. And now for black, I think you can just safely move your queen. Um, you can bring your rook to the center and challenge next move. Uh, it looks a bit loose, potentially. This is why Wesley's hesitating, because black's bishop is undefended, but there's no way to take advantage of this. Uh, black's knight is covered as well. Uh, simply, if you get one more move, swap off the rooks. You're in safety. Um, so I'm expecting this from Wesley. So the reason you want to exchange off White's Knight is because White's Knight could potentially jump into a very nice square in the center of the board. Um, if the Black Queen were to move first, for example, then uh, this Knight jump would be almost deadly. Attacking the Queen, attacking the Bishop. If the Knight is traded, then Black has traded off his better Bishop and White is able to install a monster in the middle of the board. This Bishop now peers onto these squares on the King's side. White's Queen is ready to swoop in as well. And there might even be a checkmating attack on the cards. So uh, I think this is the key moment. Wesley should and probably will just capture this uh, capture this knight. Take it off the board, play safe, and uh, not too much to worry about. What do you think, Yvanka? I, I agree with you. Objectively, black is absolutely fine. Uh, psychologically, though, I do think that Wesley will be feeling the pressure because, mm -hmm. yes, uh, I do agree with your uh, suggestion of trading the bishop for the knight. But at the same time, you're giving White the bishop pair and potential um, attack on the right side of the board and against the king. Yep. Um, so some hope of going for the black king later on. At the moment, it's pretty safe. But uh, yeah, I agree. If anyone, you would choose white here, right? I, I would choose. And uh, this remind me of a position that I commentated on with myself and Simon mm -hmm. uh, in your, your game yeah. in Gibraltar. <laughs> You'd had something with a very similar pawn structure. I think there were more pieces. More, there was another set of rooks on the board. And I remember we went, David. <laughs> <laughs> and then we moved on. <laughs> and then we came back. Oh, David's doing really well. Oh, well done. Yeah. And David won a very nice game. <laughs> I did against Rasmus Fahner, a German, uh, German player. I think that came from uh, a French defense, but a leads to the same pawn yeah. structure, essentially. And Wesley so surprises us. He brings his queen across two squares. She's nice and safely tucked next to the black king. She still protects her knight. 
but she's vulnerable to some hits. Maybe the white bishop at some point can come and attack her. Um, this can be blocked by black's bishop, potentially. The black bishop would jump back and save the day, so this isn't so effective right, right now, but uh, that idea is on the radar. Also, white's knight still can jump in. I think Magnus will be happy to see this move, oh. despite the fact it's still level, still balanced. <laughs> um, Magnus will have more hope now that he can keep more pieces on the board. Um, the more pieces that disappear, the closer we get to that dreaded draw. So, uh, yeah, I'm expecting this knight move. Otherwise, Black's Rook is simply coming across. Black is ready now to start challenging the White Queen, challenging the open file. If that happens, draw. Black is fine. Uh, so you need to create something. Bring the White Knight in, Magnus. I think that is the only chance to try and win this game. Okay, interesting. So if Magnus brings in his Knight now, that is a sign. He is feeling a little bit ambitious in this yeah, game. Yeah, I mean, I mean, there's so many things that could happen, actually, once the knight jump, jumps into the centre. So, for instance, if the rook comes over to pin the knight and the queen, well, you could even go knight takes bishop. Yeah, I think you're right, Yovanka. I think it's a winning tactic. Uh, you give up the queen, uh, and after the queen is captured, as Vishen's so an in-between move, as we call it, and uh, knight takes bishop. Yep. That's a check. That's the key. And when the king moves, you can simply take back the black rook. And white here is up on material. You've given up your queen, but you have a rook and a bishop. Or you have a rook and two bishops for the black queen. If we do a bit of counting, that's 11. The black queen worth nine with two points up. And black's king cannot actually take this white knight because now it is too exposed in the center of the board. And I think it's going to get uh, checkmated or pushed into uh, a bad square, this black king now. It only has two ways to go. If you go to the center of the board, there's going to be a discovered check. Uh, along this file, the white bishop moves out the way, check, and winning the black queen next move. And if the black king had gone to this side, then suddenly there would be checkmating ideas, for example, hitting the king with a pawn and checkmate on the edge of the board. So despite the fact we're moaning about this being a boring Berlin, a draw, there are still some tactics in the air and uh, some potential tricks, traps that uh, Magnus could set for Wesley. But they all do start with this knight move. Um, that was a long variation, but it all begins with this knight move. And uh, as Yvanka mentioned, black has to avoid some uh, ideas there. Yeah. I think you have to move your bishop. Yeah. You have to retreat somewhere. And if you do have to retreat, then suddenly white has another small advantage. Mm -hmm. And yep, this knight, beautiful. And remember, black doesn't want to exchange it off for his dark squared bishop because the dark squares are too weak. Um, you can only exchange it off for the light squared bishop. And Magnus, okay, he encourages Wesley to play a move he probably wanted to play anyway. That is a surprise to me, Ivanka, I've got to admit. Uh, what do you think of this one? Hmm. Hmm. It's slightly surprising because I too was focused on the night jump. I didn't consider this uh, small little improving move. But then again, it is Magnus' style. He makes a small improving move at the same time, creates a safe uh, square for the king. I mean, can Wesley really get away with like trying to trade pe off pieces? So, for instance, take, uh, take the knight. Yeah. This looks fine to me, and the question is whether he can bring his rook over and try and trade off even more pieces. White has the small advantage of the bishop pair, but the centre is blocked. Um, yeah, still take white, I think, but uh, yeah, it's getting close to level right now, close to equal. Yeah, and uh, whilst the players are deep in thought, Emilia Castellao tells us a very fun fact. Okay. She tells us, where well, my mouse got in the way there, and again, a fun little chess tidbit for our commentators. It says, but the Mechanics Institute in San Francisco houses the oldest chess club in the US, organized in 1854 when San Fran was a frontier community. I didn't know that, actually. I didn't. 1854, oldest chess club in the US. Wow. I would have thought it was US, uh, sorry, not US, New York. Yeah, I guess there's been some very strong players out of New York and some other places, but uh, yeah. Shout out to Amelia as well, a chess historian, uh, doing some work for FIDE now, I think. Uh, oh, cool. Oh, awesome. The history front, yeah. Fascinating facts. And we'll pretend we knew that. We'll pretend that's why we're organizing the tournament <laughs> yeah, in San Francisco. Some great chess history in San Francisco. These two players both on site, and uh, Tanya, our on site reporter in San Francisco, did get a chat with both Wesley, uh, Wesley and Magnus before the start of uh, today. Magnus, you've been looking forward to this clash, and how are you feeling going into the match? Feeling pretty good. Starting with the white pieces. Yeah, I'm going to try and put some pressure on him from the start. What do you think will be the most deciding factor in this clash? Time. Fair enough. Good luck. Thank you. Wesley, walking up, you mentioned you're excited about this one. Tell yeah. us uh, your feelings. 
Uh, well, I'm very pleased and very glad to be back in the Meltwater Champions Chess Tour. As I said yesterday, I was very happy when they invited me for the last one. And uh, yeah, I'm very happy to play Magnus Carlsen as the best player in the world the very first round. <laughs> I want to ask you about that because that's one matchup we are really, really looking forward to. What yeah. can we expect when the global champion takes on the world champion? Well, I mean, I hope to be able to do my best. I don't know what form I'll be in. I think my best form I can compete, but uh, we'll have to see which part of me shows up today. But you know, I prepared hard for it and uh, we'll see what happens. Uh, I think uh, also depends on what mood Magnus is in today. Wasi, what according to you will be the critical factor in today's matchup? Uh, well, you know, uh, strength of the moves. Uh, I mean, I, I, I guess I've beaten Magnus a few times before in the past. Uh, not sure why exactly. <laughs> and, you know, in, I guess strength of the moves would be the most important, you know, whether Magnus gets a good opening and if he gets a comfortable position. Or if I get a position that I like, then I'll have good chances, I guess. You look calm, composed, and ready for the fight. Yeah, I, I hope so. I hope there I am. I, I'm a bit nervous, but at the same time, uh, I, I'm ready. Hopefully, the results will show it. All the best, Wesley. Thank you. Magnus Carlsen saying this match depends uh, on uh, time that the, the clock will be the critical factor. Wesley wondering what uh, version of himself would turn up today. I remember one word from last uh, season, solid. So? And I guess it is the solid so that has turned up today. Yeah, the so solid crew. Yeah, uh, yeah, exactly. He's uh, at least adopting that strategy with black. I think that makes sense. You start off, especially he mentioned the word nervous as well. If you're feeling the nerves, just kind of feel your way into the game. Don't take too many risks too early because that's when bad things happen. If you risk take, if you kind of leave holes in your defense. Um, so he's just keeping all the pieces on the board, covering all the squares. He'll try and press with white, as Yvanka mentioned, if he can hold this game. and. At the moment, I say if, because suddenly Black's retreating. Suddenly Black's pieces are going backwards. It's Magnus in move. I don't really see any way to advance kind of the attack, advance the initiative, momentum, unless you jump in to the center with White's Knight, as we've been advocating for a while. But uh, yeah, it's, for me, it was fascinating, the different styles on the board, of course, but also in the interviews, Magnus, <laughs> short and sweet, <laughs> yeah. just not messing about. And uh, Wesley taking his time, maybe talking out the nerves from his system. That's uh, true. Really fascinating. Yeah. 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 Magnus, uh, he uh, seemed to be in a good mood, I have to say, though. In that <laughs> I thought he was seemed in a very direct mood. Yeah. Yeah, to the point, business-like, move on <laughs> to the game. Yep. You think um, he's doing the same on the board? Direct mood? Yeah, I mean, he's playing very quickly. You know, they blitzed out the opening and uh, now he's taking his time. Mm -hmm. And uh, Wesley seemed to be a bit more hesitant. But uh, to me, he seems to have a lot of faith in his position. You know, he's not making any critical decisions. He's simply believing in his pawn structure, believing that his position will hold. Yeah. And I'm quite concerned, actually, because when one tends to do that, one tends to drift into passivity. And uh, Magnus, wow. well, that's the kind of move I, I like to play. Unfortunately, I've been punished a lot quite, <laughs> quite recently by making these type of moves. He's uh, grabbing as much space as possible on the right side. Yeah, that move comes with uh, warning attached. <laughs> Don't try this at home, pushing oh. pawns in front of your own king. But Magnus, as you say, he's taking control of some key squares. And uh, we have to show the idea behind this move because it is, uh, a bit surprising, I've got to say, it crossed my mind, but uh, I don't think I'd have the courage to play this move that Magnus has just chosen. Um, it's all to do with taking Black's control of the F5 square away. And uh, the whole reason, for example, let's go back one move. White wanted to jump in with his knight. He wanted to attack this bishop. This looks very scary, but Black can bring his bishop over to challenge White's light square bishop. If pieces come off the board, we're heading towards a draw. So Magnus, by pushing his pawn forward, has stopped that idea. Next move, White wants to jump in. As he has just done, the black rook swings across to attack the white queen, and Magnus blocks. He blocks with his knight, and now this black bishop doesn't have access to this key f5 square. No more exchanges. It is attacked, and probably it just has to retreat. Uh, you want to run away with this bishop. You can push it to this square, but it kind of gets in the way of the black rook. It gets in the way. It's staring of all of its own pawns. Not a good square at all. So uh, I recommend this bishop to retreat. It's attacked. And uh, again, remember, you don't want to eliminate, you don't want to trade off your own dark squared bishop as black, because that is a key defender. 
Um, so I think Wesley's just going to step back and Magnus, will he regret pushing a pawn in front of the White King? The White King looking really loose, really airy right now. Ooh. I don't know. It's, uh, you mentioned you've been punished in this kind of situation yes. before. So have I. You've angled many <laughs> times in my career. Don't touch pawns in front of your king normally, but if you're Magnus, you can get away with it. And uh, Wesley doesn't actually retreat the bishop to the starting square. Instead, he steps it to the square in front of the zone rook. Yeah, I didn't huh. like this because, as it you mentioned, clumsy, the rook, right? uh, it looks clumsy. Uh, looks like the bishop might be a tactical target at some point, but uh, at least it's protected for now. Everything in Wesley's camp is protected. Look how passive it is, though. The two heavy pieces on the back rank. Um, these three, though, they look like they're very well centralized. So at the moment, it's holding. But Magnus Carlsen opening up around his king. Maybe we will see some action in this game after all. And uh, the action is uh, happening in San Francisco, where our rowing reporter Tanya is on site. What's happening, Tanya? Kaya, it is so much fun here to be here and to see chess happen. San Francisco is the global tech hub. So many smart, bright minds. So chess is just the perfect fit. And to tell us what chess is like in San Francisco, I've got a very special guest with me. It's Juliana. She's the founder, the organizer at the Bernal Chess Club. Juliana, welcome. Thank you. It's great to be here. Very it's, exciting. It's super nice to have you here with us. Tell us a little bit about the chess scene in San Francisco. Uh, I can tell you the the main thing in San Francisco is the Mechanics Institute, the oldest chess club either in the country or on the West Coast. Um, that's kind of the main thing. My little corner of the San Francisco chess scene is the Bernal Chess Club, which happens in the Bernal Heights neighborhood. Saturday afternoons, a bunch of people get together and play. It's just kind of a good time. Um, and then on Wednesday, the fourth Wednesday of every month, we have a lecture at the library about a, a historical chess games. I did get a chance to go to the Mechanics Institute. It is the oldest club in the United States, a very special place. Yeah, it's wonderful. It's kind of where I started playing, uh, taking a class there. It's the first time I played over the board. Um, so it's a special place to me. You mentioned you got into chess about five years ago. How did that happen? Uh, I, I love solving puzzles. And a friend of mine said, oh, do you play chess? And I said, no, oh, you know, I know how the pieces move, but I don't really play. Um, and then that night I went and did some Googling and wound up on chess.com and started playing against bots. And then about a year later, started taking a class with humans. That's awesome. And tell me a little bit about the Bernal Chess Club, because it sounds like a really fun place where uh, do you have regulars who come in for a game of chess? A lot of regulars over the years. We've been doing it for about three and a half years. Um, and some regulars come for a few months and go and come back. And some have been there the whole time. Lots of adults, lots of kids, um, and it's just a really friendly vibe, very casual. Sounds a lot of fun. We've got a big matchup today here, Juliana, with Magnus taking on Wesley. Are you for home team? Are you supporting Wesley in this one? Um, I hadn't really picked a team yet. I guess I should do that. We'll see how this game turns out. All right, well, enjoy your day here at the Meltwater Champions Chess Star Final. Thank, Thank you. Juliana from the Bernal Chess Club telling us about the chess scene in the city. We did see uh, images there from this Bernal Chess Club. Seems like uh, the chess scene in San Francisco is just uh, crazy. A lot of chess interest in uh, the city, probably after the Queen's Gambit, everyone. Yeah, it's getting more and more popular, um, um, of course, inspired by the Queen's Gambit. And of course, also the effect that lockdown had when yeah. suddenly everyone was interested in playing chess. And I'm just going to stop there because there was a move I totally did not expect coming Wesley from Wesley well because it looked like he king. has been baited into also opening up his king. Wow. I don't like this one. I mean, it looks so risky to open up the light squared bishop. Yeah, I, I'm inclined to agree. Whether it's a good move or a bad move, it's not Wesley style, right? Mm -hmm. We mentioned pragmatic, solid, safety first, all those kind of terms when we think about Wesley's chess, and this is not a solid move. Um, yes, it's kicking back one bishop, but uh, let's see the downside. Um, Wesley as well, remember the clock, he's down on time. So the downside behind this move is that the light square bishop has a clear diagonal, has a clear target. It's only a one piece attacking right now. Black's king is, however, gonna feel the heat along that diagonal and uh, the positive, the one positive to this push is that White's other bishop is kicked back and 
Uh, Magnus now, he's doing a bit of calculating. I don't really think he has any alternatives uh, other than moving this bishop. I'm expecting it to retreat. Uh, it's unclear which square is best. You can choose from this square, this square, or even the whole way back. Bishops are long-range pieces, so um, it would make some sense to retreat the bishop the whole way back. Um, I'm inclined to drop back to this square just to protect the white rook. White's rook was a bit loose. I'm wondering whether Magnus has other ideas in mind. The white knight, for example, could jump out the way, um, but no, the bishop was attacked, and he does retreat the whole way back. So he's safe here. He won't get hit by the black knight jumping anywhere, but Wesley has some maneuvering to do. I was going to say maybe the black queen can act as a defender around her king, but first the bishop drops back, and this is really mysterious stuff. Maybe it's genius, though, from Wesley. He's getting ready to kick back white's best piece. It looks so counterintuitive, so unnatural, but this is why the, these guys are the best in the world. They find these really odd-looking, unorthodox moves, uh, which do have concrete ideas behind them. And they're so good at calculating that they realize, yes, it's ugly, but it works. And uh, yeah, it takes a very, very strong player to put aside their prejudice, put aside the aesthetics. And uh, actually, where's White's knight going? If Black gets this pawn push, it's going to get kicked back, and suddenly Magnus will be on the retreat. Mm -hmm. What do you think, Ivanka? Is there a way to take advantage of this loosening, this weakening of Black's position? It has to be now, and I'm thinking you've got to strike when the iron's hot, and I'm thinking push my pawn forward, the f-pawn, move it two squares, and uh, try to liberate the dark square bishop as well. Yeah, uh, for example, Black really shouldn't touch this pawn, really shouldn't capture it, because suddenly the bishop jumps back to where it came from. And uh, yes, the white bishop has lost a couple of moves, but in the meantime, Black's king protection, especially along the g-file, has been uh, completely destroyed. So, yeah, I love that move, uh, I've got to say. But it comes with some risk attached. Again, any pawn pushes, right? They leave weak squares. And uh, the problem with this pawn push is later on, not right now, but later on, this square might be available, a very juicy square for the black knight. Mm -hmm. And uh, I guess Wesley might have ideas in mind, for example, of challenging the white knight, kicking this one back. And it will all depend on whether this works for black. It does look like it's hanging by a thread, but the evaluation bar, uh, above the board does say that black is just about fine. So uh, is Magnus feeling aggressive? He's shown some hints of aggression so far. If he really wants to push, really wants to attack, he'll throw this pawn forward. But three minutes now for Magnus. He said time would be the key. And it is time and pressure. Uh, I love this type of position, actually. It's very subtle, sophisticated chess. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> And, uh, well... It always starts that way, and then it evolves into just a mess <laughs> yeah, <laughs> a bit later on. Rather like my games. And uh, <laughs> I know he, he moves his knight back. Okay. I did not expect that, because I thought once the, the fireworks had been uh, started that you needed to continue that way. You've got to be consistent. But uh, the mark of a great player is to be flexible. And uh, Magnus now just saying, let's fight. OK, he's gone for another pawn push. Harry the H-pawn. It is the H-pawn. <laughs> wish Simon could be here to enjoy that move. Yeah, we miss the ginger GM. Uh, hopefully he'll join us at some point. But um, yeah, in the spirit of Simon Williams, in the spirit of Alpha Zero as well that we mentioned earlier, throwing the H-pawn forward to destabilize black structure. Um, this has two points. Firstly, you're attacking black stronghold. Uh, the pawn that's actually keeping Black's position together. Um, you're attacking this pawn on g5, and uh, if the pawn is captured, then White's knight happily recaptures. Suddenly, Black has isolated pawns, so even long-term, even if Black survives the upcoming attack, uh, there will be structural problems. Um, normally, in this type of situation, you never, ever want to capture away from the center, which Black would be doing. You want to kind of protect your stronghold, which he's done, Wesley, so, but this oh, is loose as well. Oh, I was going to say something, David. Actually, mm -hmm. I'll just check the computer evaluations, and uh, Wesley's last pawn move is a huge mistake. There was wow. only really one way to maintain the balance, and that was to take a risk take a gamble and actually jump in with a knight to the center. OK, so Black should have jumped in with the knight. And why is this a mistake, Ivanka? Is it because of this move, uh, retreating the white queen? White has a threat, <laughs> bringing the queen to h7. This would be checkmate. The black king would be trapped. Uh, the white queen would be defended by her bishop in the center. So massive threat on the board. Black has to now play your idea, yep. has to jump in. And Magnus is simply trying to erode this knight. He isn't even interested in grabbing a pawn. You could capture this knight and win a pawn in the process, but bishops are the key pieces in this position. Uh, so White's knight has retreated, attacking the black knight on e4. Can he hold it together? There's a huge threat of pushing this pawn forward, hitting the black knight. The knight is pinned. If it moves out the way, wherever it goes, then remember this checkmating idea, the white queen swooping up to h7, trapping the black king. Um, yeah, you've got to be really careful as Wesley. So right now, evaluation bar still says it's equal. Yeah. He does block this diagonal after the white knight retreat. Remember, this was a threat. So he pushes the pawn. 
Uh, this diagonal is blocked, but can he survive Wesley? Oh, evaluation bar starting to react. You were right, Yvanka. <laughs> it's become, in practical terms, difficult for black. Definitely. And uh, you can just see that the weaknesses around the black king are starting to creak, and also white's pieces are springing forward to life. And, uh, well, I guess well, Magnus must be calculating what's going to happen if he trades off pawns. Yep. So first thing move that you look for in this type of position, checks, captures, threats, direct moves. Um, he was in a direct mood uh, in the interview, Magnus Carlsen. He does indeed trade off this pawn. Um, you could make an argument next move as well for trying to get rid of this black knight. Does he trade it off? Yes, he does. He's removing defenders, black's strongest pieces. And uh, which way is Wesley going to exchange? Even though pieces are disappearing from the board, it's still the black king that's the target. It's still black's king that's weak. Mm -hmm. Let's go back to the players. It is heating up both down now to three minutes. Wow. And fireworks are ahead. This one, it started slowly, but it's been simmering for a while. What is that that Magnus is drinking? <laughs> energy drink, maybe. And uh, he will need energy in order to break through and win this game. Wesley's definitely on the defensive now as Black. That's actually kind of shocking. Magnus has been very much on the water while playing chess for, I would like, the past, what, five years? Yeah. You're right. Staying very much away from sugar and caffeine and stuff like that. This is a huge change. If it is, for example, an energy drink. Yeah. You yeah. even quit the orange juice, right? I thought yeah. that would be pretty healthy, but no. Uh, water it was. Yeah. yeah. And uh, meanwhile, a set of rooks have left the board. And still, I would say that Magnus has the preferable position because Black's King so weak. And also, take a look at those two pawns there. I mean, they are just sitting targets. Yeah, black's pawn on the e-file that's just captured and that black g-pawn in front of the black king. Isolated pawns can be weaknesses and we would class this as an endgame now, right? Mm -hmm. I guess. Ah. Uh, there aren't that many pieces on the board. The queens are still on, but it's basically a queen endgame just with bishops. And uh, despite the fact we're in an endgame, still a lot of life left. Magnus as well is the master, essentially, in endgames. Not many people can compete. Maybe Wesley can in certain endgames, but this one will be difficult. Magnus needs to create some threats before the Black Queen gets into the game and he shuffles up just one square with the White Queen. She's hinting at coming in on a diagonal, going towards the Black King, delivering some checks, also stopping the Black Queen from jumping into any squares. I think a Queen Exchange might favour White huh. in this type of position because Black's pawns are so weak. And apparently no drama in the drinking situation, it's sparkling water. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but drama on the board, you think this will end up with a winner? The bar is very much over to Magnus Carlsen's side. I'm not sure whether it will end up with a winner, but uh, there's only going to be one person trying for the victory, and that's Magnus Carlsen. And uh, I just love this little queen move that he's played, you know, mobilizing the queen, getting ready to launch some checks, and at the same time, still hinting at attacking those pawns. And Wesley stepping forward with his king. Yeah, stepping out into no man's land, potentially mm. walking into some checks. Um, whether there's a result in this game or, I mean, is a decisive result in this game or not, look at the other games as well. Just below uh, the player's cameras, we can see Duda has a winning advantage. But earlier he was actually losing. And uh, Mamadjarov turning things as well in his favour against Prague. So a lot of drama in game one of the finals. Magnus, what a calm move. <laughs> <laughs> I would have been too tempted. I would have swooped in with the White Queen, given some checks. Maybe that wouldn't have come to anything, though. And instead, Magnus is using every single piece, inviting everything to the party. The White King steps forward. But according to the computer, this has blown some of the advantage. White's King is slightly vulnerable to checks itself now. And, uh, okay, what do you think of this decision, uh, Yvanka? Stepping forward with the White King, now Magnus going after some pawns. Surprising. Surprising. I mean, I didn't expect it, but uh, I still think it's great for White. Mm -hmm. And uh, there we see Magnus mobilizing the bishop. But the big question is how to improve. I mean, White does have the potential actually to push some pawns there on the left side mm -hmm. and uh, perhaps use those pawns as a decoy to yeah. take the Black Queen away from the protection of her king. Yeah. And uh, Wesley, his king, is definitely the more vulnerable of the two. So he marches up the board, looks counterintuitive, but actually there's no checks available now. Uh, the king wants to hide on light squares, the black king, both kings actually, because both bishops are on dark squares. Um, so Magnus, will he go for that idea now? I think he might, Yvanka. I think you might be right. White's pawns on the queen side. You're a bit stuck elsewhere, so why not push them? But uh, Wesley has potentially the idea of bringing the black queen across two squares to f5, offering a trade of queens. If the queens come off now, because black's king is so active, 
Probably a draw. Mm -hmm. Probably fine for black. I think Wesley might be over the worst. Maybe Magnus was trying to be a bit too clever, a bit too sophisticated by bringing his king up. White's king, not necessarily on a great square, and uh, he could have used that one extra move to get active with the white queen. It's all about timing. Maybe Magnus has missed the moment. Yeah, I, I, potentially, I, I think so. But still, there are questions to be asked. I mean, Magnus, first of all, has to give his queen a purpose, and the white king, like you said, you know, needs to be improved. Ideally, I'd like to actually move the king to where the queen is standing <laughs> and then put the queen somewhere where she covers all the checks. Yeah. I think Wesley has a key idea up his sleeve as well. So Magnus, he's ticking under one minute. We'll come back to the players in a moment. But uh, here, Magnus, I think his plan was to swoop in with the White Queen, create some pressure, start attacking some pawns. Um, he retreats, actually. But here, Wesley's idea was to offer a Queen exchange, giving up the Black Bishop. And now suddenly, after this check, White's King has no escape. If you go to the right, the Black Queen follows you with a check. If you go to the left, the Black Queen follows you again. If you go back, the Black Queen swoops in and the position would be a draw. Repetition of moves, no escape, perpetual check. So Magnus, his idea wasn't quite working. It would have been led to a draw simply. So he had to retreat. He stepped back with the White Queen, but the White Queen's not great now. And Wesley takes the opportunity to push forward himself. Uh, suddenly, I'm a bit worried for Magnus. The momentum is in Black's favor. And suddenly, an endgame. These pawns might be dangerous. These pawns marching down on the left side of the board. I think it might be time to try and uh, bail out to a to a draw. Yeah, uh, definitely. It's uh, getting double-edged again because both sides have the possibility to create past pawns. I'm always wary now of pushing past, pushing pawns in end games. <laughs> After sitting next to you for so long, I'm like, oh, you should be patient. And there we see a Magnus swoop in with the queen. And I mean, there has been consequences to Wesley's ambitious pawn moves there because if White were to make the right set of trades, it might be the D, the D4 pawn that is the winner. Yeah, that white D pawn blockaded by the Black Queen right now, but it is a passed pawn long term. I'm wondering whether, firstly, Wesley can just lock things up. He's closed down the Queen side. Everything's blocked now on the left side. But I was wondering whether he can still try this idea of swinging the Black Queen across and going for some checks. He didn't go for that. And uh, now Magnus running away with the White King. That's a preemptive retreat again. Magnus has done this a few times this game. He, he knows the opponent's plan. Black's Queen was going to come in with some checks, as we showed. So he's uh, running yeah. away. Yeah, I like this King move. I, it was been on my radar now for the last few moves. Yeah. I've been thinking, what happens if the White King runs all the way to the left? And then when the Queen trade does happen, White's is primed for that. Yeah, and did you notice Wesley shook his head and he exhaled? He did not look happy. I think he maybe regrets not going for the draw, not bringing that black queen towards the white king earlier. Now that white king is running, as you mentioned, that way. And uh, okay, a check. Will the white king continue its journey? If it gets pushed back towards the right side of the board, then the black queen will go back where it came from. Your idea? In we got a runner, <laughs> a renegade king. And uh, yeah, the king is uh, coming in. And uh, now Magnus is uh, free with the queen to give a few checks. And remember that weak pawn, you know, especially the e4 pawn? It's target. Yeah, black's bishop is also under fire right now. Black's bishop no longer protected. Does Wesley have to go back with his queen where he came from? That would be a passive retreat, a negative move. Both players down around the one minute mark. This one is going to be a scramble. Who can hold their nerve? Wesley mentioned he was nervous before the game. Could that play a factor? It's still black fighting for the draw. Even after everything, even with the computer evaluation at 0.0, .0 and black's bishop just moves. Very yeah. calm. It is very calm. Allowing but the white queen to give a check. Yeah, and uh, there's suddenly the e4 pawn is up for grabs. Mm -hmm. I mean, the Black King has to step forward. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> it's running. Ooh, that's out in the open. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Ooh. Very vulnerable now. Yeah. More checks, inevitable. Another check. The Black King goes back where it came from. The problem for White is if the Black King sits on light squares, only the Queen can attack. White cannot combine his Queen and Bishop on the light squares. White's Bishop is a bit of a passive piece. So I think Wesley might have found the best way to defend looked scary. Again, these top players are so good at weighing up the danger, weighing up the risk. Wesley hates risk, but he knew that his king is safe enough for now. Yeah, what do you think? Draw Yavanka or can, will Magnus, can Magnus play for more? He can repeat the moves, he can continue giving checks and that would force a draw instantly. Would you push forward with a white deep pawn? It's, it's hard, to, that might come with some more uh, yeah. some downsides. Gives another check. Give check, and I, I do like the idea of pushing the deep pawn. Take the risk, 
Puerta, Wesley under some pressure. Yeah, but Wesley looking confident. Magnus down to 20 seconds. That's quite a big time difference suddenly. And in practical terms, maybe it's safer to just get the draw, move on to the next game, but Magnus will be reluctant. And uh, OK, we see oh. the position repeat itself three times, and we do have a result. It's over, game one. Started with 